Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera and Merry Christmas to all of you. Uh, right now it's uh, kind of getting late in the afternoon on Christmas Day here in Japan. Uh, we are of course uh, a day ahead of most other places and a lot of you who are watching this video are probably waking up now or will be waking up shortly to your uh, 2023 Christmas Day. I hope everyone has a wonderful Christmas and that you all got uh, what you wanted or at least a little bit of what you wanted. We can't always get everything we want but it helps sometimes to get a little bit. Uh, in my case, I got something really nice today, and that is this uh, wonderful camera here. This is a uh, Roleflex uh, 2.8F twin lens reflex camera, uh, something which I've been uh, wanting to get for a long time, uh, and just, you know, uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of things have kind of gotten in the way of my getting one of these cameras uh, over the, the past two or three years, which I've been looking for one. Uh, I am. I have some experience with the Rolleiflex cameras. I've had a few of these over the years, and my first one was the Rolleiflex uh, 2.8A with a Zeiss Opton Tessar lens, and then I got uh, a 2.8C, which had the Zenotar lens. Then I got uh, a 2.8 uh, and a 3.5F uh, Rolleiflex, and uh, the 3.5F uh, turned out to belong to a rather well-known uh, street photographer here in Japan. I won't. Uh, uh, mentioned his name, uh, but uh, yeah, he, he used the hell out of the camera and it really showed, but it was a really wonderful camera which I, I enjoyed taking photographs with. But I, I sold that to a collector who was a big fan of this photographer and uh, my most recent one, the 2.8e, I dropped. And when I dropped, I, you know, it didn't do so much damage to the camera, at least when I first looked at it because it was in a case. But upon closer inspection, I found out that uh, it aggravated a problem with the separation of the lens elements in the front. So uh, I couldn't find replacement lens elements for the camera, so I eventually sold it for parts. And I've been kind of waiting for uh, a new... Uh, 2.8 f or at least a well used one uh, a good used one with the planar lens and finally today it arrived in the mail a couple days later than i expected but uh, it, it's really nice to get something uh, really pleasant on christmas day so the roliflex company has a really long history in photography they began manufacturing uh, tlr cameras they designed them way back in the 1920s and they produced a lot of different models and variations over the years and uh all the way up to the you know to the current day you can still find uh cameras like the 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 gx uh for sale these are kind of ungodly expensive nowadays and they make these i guess really uh, uh posh limited edition sets which are ridiculously expensive and i guess uh I look nice decorating someone's uh, shelf or something. Uh, they're, they're kind of really too nice for a professional photographer to use and too expensive for most other people. So they're kind of just a, a collectible item which uh, people don't do much with. Uh, the most popular of all the cameras uh, is this one here, uh, the Model F, which was available in a couple of different lens designs, actually more than a couple. Uh, the most common ones were the 3.5F uh, and the 2.8F, and of course I think I mentioned this is the 2.8F version. There was a wide angle version with a 55mm lens, and there was one with a telephoto version. And uh, yeah, these, the wide angle versions are quite uh, valuable nowadays, and uh, as are the telephoto ones. Uh, they're, they're very popular with both photographer, you know, photographers and collectors. Uh, photographers love these cameras because they simply take wonderful pictures. And uh, some of my favorite photographers uh, are uh, avid uh, Roloflex users. Uh, the photographer I mentioned here in Japan, he wasn't really known for uh, you know, shooting with the Roloflex, and I was surprised when I found out. But then when I looked at the camera and some of the stuff he'd done with it, yeah, I, w I was really amazed with what he was able to do with it. So I'm going to go ahead and describe the features, controls, and functions of the Roloflex 2.8F. And before I get started, uh, maybe a little bit of background is necessary on these cameras. Uh, there was the A, B, C, D, E, and F version, and then most recently the, the GX version. Uh, the F is probably the most popular with photographers nowadays because it's the most uh, current variation which uh, uh, people can afford. Uh, they're still expensive, but they're not as expensive as the, the GX or limited edition models. Uh, the, the different models were made, of course, uh, progressing over the years and becoming a little bit more technical, technologically advanced as time went by. Uh, the F version was released in 1960. 
and it was quite a cutting edge camera at the time it was released. Uh, this is the time when uh, 35 millimeter photography was uh, starting to take over, but uh, Rolleiflex had such a, a reputation uh, in photography that despite the fact that uh, uh, twin lens or TLR camera sales were falling among Japanese makers, uh, demand for the Rolleiflex was still strong, and the F model remained in production for more than 20 years. There were a lot of different variations uh, which were made uh, and improvements which came over the years. And this one here is kind of a, uh, a mid-late version. Uh, the earlier versions, of course, were available with the 3.5 or 2.8 lens with either the Xenotar or Planar lenses. And uh, the early versions came with the 120 uh, uh, roll film uh, cap capability where the later versions allowed you to use 120 and 220 roll film. Uh, fortunately, this is one of the later versions. You kind of see like the swollen out part here on the back, and that kind of uh, uh, denotes that it's a you know it can use 220 roll film. Let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls, and functions. We'll go ahead and start at the top here with the viewfinder hood, and this is just like the the viewfinder uh, which I have shown on a lot of the other TLR videos I've done, uh, mostly of the the Japanese cameras. A little bit different, and then it has this really cool uh, articulated system for folding and unfolding. Uh, more elegant and uh, uh, a, a very big improvement over the uh, uh, focusing hoods used on the Japanese cameras because this camera was made to uh, allow you to remove uh, the focusing ju hood just like so. So you could attach a prism finder to the top. Now uh, it's, it, it's a little bit like the uh, finders which come on like the, the C series of Mamiya twin lens reflex cameras, the interchangeable ones. Uh, but I, I really love the design of this uh, focusing hood. It, it's just really, really cool. And if you happen to break it or damage it, if you shop around, you can find a replacement hood for sale on eBay or wherever. Uh, it has a pop-up uh, uh, focusing loop, just like the Japanese cameras, which I have uh, described in other videos. And it has a sports finder, which you activate by simply pushing the back down like so, and looking through the small square in the front, and looking through the large uh, one in the front, and just kind of lining up what you're shooting at. And simply to release it, you just kind of squeeze these a little bit, and that releases the sports finder door. Always make sure that you uh, fold down the mirror before you, or the focusing loop before you close the uh, hood so you don't damage it. On the back of the camera here, we don't have much. We have kind of a, a depth of field. Uh, uh, scale. Uh, some of the earlier ones have a very convenient light meter card on the back which shows the months of the year and light conditions and recommended exposure settings depending on the kind of film you have uh, loaded in the camera. On the bottom we have a quarter inch tripod socket. On this side here uh, we have the film winding and shutter charging mechanism. I love how smooth these are. We have the film counter window on the top here. Uh, we have the strap attachments on the top here. These ones use kind of an odd alligator clip which has, was made for the Rolleiflex cameras and a little bit hard to find. You can adapt other uh, uh, straps to, to fit on them using rings but uh, I would recommend using the original ones if you can. It's, it runs you less rat risk of rubbing the paint off of the focusing hood on the top here. On the other side here we have some of the more important stuff. We have uh, first we have the focusing knob here and the focusing knob has a distance scale, and also uh, we have the light meter readout here. The cool thing about this camera is it has a coupled light meter, and the way you work the light meters, you simply point the camera at what you're taking a photograph of, and you operate uh, the aperture uh, knob and, uh, or excuse me, the aperture knob here and the shutter speed knob, and what you try to do is you try to get a uh, little needle with a ring on it to line up with the meter needle itself. And you can use these in different combinations of aperture and shutter speed for whatever effect you want for freezing action or for shallow or uh, 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 deep depth of field. Uh, just depends on what you like. And uh, yeah, it's a really cool system and it works really well. Uh, another thing which I, I like about some of these cameras is, you know, not all of them, but the, e, the ENF versions have a really wonderful uh, system for measuring the depth of field and I don't know if you can see it here uh, next to the meter ring but you can kind of see that wide slot opening and closing and that shows you how much depth of field you have at any given aperture. It's a really cool system and very easy to use, much easier to use than other twin lens reflex cameras uh, on the market. 
Uh, on the bottom here we have the uh, dial which we use to adjust the film speed. The center dial adjusts the film speed and you just turn it until the number in the window uh, matches the film you have loaded in the camera. And then we have a ring here for exposure compensation. And I've talked a bit about exposure compensation in the past and what a wonderful thing it is. Uh, the, the reason we have exposure compensation on these cameras are uh, uh, to allow you to get correct or good metering in uh, difficult lighting situations. For example, I, I've mentioned it before, if you're taking a picture of your kids playing in the snow, you want the snow to look white and not gray. And if you're taking a picture of, say, uh, you know, a modeling shoot and uh, the model is wearing a black dress, and you want the dress to look black and not gray, and of course you, you can use the uh, uh, exposure compensation to make sure that it, the exposure comes out the way it should. Uh, basically what you do is um, uh, if you're trying to shoot something white you uh, 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 you can increase the exposure to keep it uh, white, you know, uh, use a longer shutter speed than what, what is recommended or the opposite when you're uh, you know, using uh, trying to photograph something black. Uh, this system here allows you to do that and that's one of the things which I really love about the light meter system on the Rolleiflex camera. Now we have a few different things here on the front. We have a flash sync socket here on the sides, which allows you to use a, a flash. You can use modern flash or a vintage flash. Uh, they all work the, the same. We have the shutter release button here, which accepts the standard cable release. And we have a locking uh, collar here to prevent it from locking. And here we have a, a self timer lever. And the cool thing about the, these cameras, self timer works pretty well in them, but um, uh, I've never had a, issues with these things in the Rolleiflex Flex cameras, but uh, uh, sometimes I still worry about using them, I, I, you know, and in the way I, I take photographs, uh, I, I I don't use uh, self timers. I'm going to take the, you know use uh, take photographs you know, for subjects where I need a self timer. I'll just use my phone. I won't use a film camera for stuff like that. Uh, loading the film in these cameras, uh, pretty simple. Uh, there's a lever on the bottom here, just like in the other cameras which I've described. Uh, we have here the uh, uh, take-up spool is located in the bottom. When you're loading the camera, put the take-up spool in the top here. And the cool thing about these cameras is the automatic system for uh, starting the film counter. Normally in other cameras you kind of have to uh, look, through, <clears throat> look through the window or uh, line up marks or things like that when you're uh, starting the film. Uh, the, the good thing about the Rolleiflex, it has this kind of uh, roller thing here which it senses when the film is starting after the uh, paper has run through and then it goes ahead and automatically starts. Uh, the film counting system. It's a really wonderful feature. Uh, to tell if you have the, the 120 or 220 roll version, you just look for the slots here <clears throat> on the film pressure plate. Uh, if it's a 220 capable camera, it will allow you to shift the pressure plate to make more uh, room for that, the larger uh, roll of film. Uh, it says six, by six by six on one side and 12 exposures for 120 or 24 exposures on uh, a 220 roll film. Now 120 roll film here is still quite easy to find. You can find it on Amazon and lots of other places and still quite popular here in Japan and surprisingly reasonable. Uh, you know, 35 millimeter has gotten more expensive recently, but uh, 120 roll film has not gone up as sharply as 35 millimeter film. Uh, it's, it, it, the 120 roll film has been around for a long time. It predates uh, 35 millimeter film. A lot of people think that it will continue to be produced uh, well past it. Uh, I hope so because it, it's really wonderful to have film to shoot with uh, these wonderful cameras. So uh, what I, I love about the cameras, the, the particularly the 2.8F, uh, I love uh, the, the improved light metering system and the cup, you know, the way it's coupled to the uh, uh, aperture and uh, uh, shutter uh, speed dials. Uh, I love the interchangeable uh, or removable focusing hood. Uh, my next uh, thing I'm going to get for this will be a prism finder because I kind of I like being able to hold the camera more up to my eye than looking through it from my waist. The waist perspective is kind of e interesting for uh, a lot of people who are shooting and a lot of people really love this. Uh, it, it's one of the things which has kind of gives the TLR camera its kind of uh, uh, character you're, you're shooting it usually from a lower perspective than you would shoot a, a normal 35 millimeter camera. Uh, for myself, you know, I, I'm, I'm fine to use either way, but um, uh, I still kind of like the, to, to use the, the prism on it. 
Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a really wonderful and flexible camera. Another good thing about these cameras is how easily you can shoot 35 millimeter film with them. The 35 millimeter uh, film conversion kit is quite easy to find and relatively inexpensive compared to say the uh, Japanese versions. Uh, if you're looking for the 35 millimeter kit for Ricoh Flex or Yashica Flex, it's much more expensive than the one for the Ricoh Flex, despite the fact that this is a, a much more highly engineered camera. Uh, if, you, if you want something that just gets you like the, the maximum you know, effect, the, the, the best thing you can get on a film, it's really hard to go wrong with one of these. Now when it comes to like saying which is the best medium format camera, uh, the Rolleiflex uh, uh, series really rates high, especially the later, say, uh, C, D, E, and F series with the planar and Xenotar lens. A lot of people love the Hasselblad camera, which pretty much has the same lens as the, the Rolleiflex. The Rolleiflex does away with the reflex mirror and all the motion, so a lot of people, you, you'll get, you know, they, they, a lot of people claim that uh, the Hasselblad system, the, the motion of the mirror can blur the photos. That's not an issue with the Rolleiflex camera, which has nothing like that. All it has is just a simple uh, mechanical leaf shutter. Uh, other things, uh, uh, a lot of, there, there, of course there are you know, cameras like the, the Mamiya 6 and 7 series, the, the more modern uh, medium format cameras. And I, I really love these cameras with their more sophisticated uh, uh, electronic metering and off the film metering, which is, uh, you know, uh, something which uh, you know they, they've kind of pioneered with some of these cameras and also the la latest or newest uh, uh, Fujifilm cameras. But <clears throat> I guess when it comes to you know performance for the the dollar, it's really hard to beat one of these uh, Rolleiflex cameras. Uh, cameras like the Mamiya 7 and 7.2 have gotten ri ridiculously expensive. Uh, the, the big Texas Lake uh, Fujis, I really love those cameras, the big um, uh, rangefinder style medium format cameras, 6x7, sometimes 6x9 cameras. Uh, the, you know, they're, they're called the GW. I haven't done a review on one of those, but I hope to do when, you know, some when I, I get a hold of these cameras. And then, of course, the smaller format 645 cameras and whatever, but Kind of like the, if, if I had to choose the best all around medium format camera, uh, the twin lens reflex camera always comes near the, you know, to the top of my list because it's relatively lightweight, it's relatively compact, uh, it has a very simple uh, operating system, uh, it's very easy to handle and use, and it, it just simply takes wonderful pictures. And if you're shopping for the different uh, twin lens reflex cameras uh, and you really want the best, uh, it's hard to go wrong with the, the Rolle Flex. So anyway, uh, that's it for my video. It's running a little bit longer than I expected. It's starting to get dark out here now and much colder than it was. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end it now. Uh, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm uh, getting more cameras, which I plan to be doing reviews about. If you'd like to see these, uh, please subscribe. Uh, if, you like the if you like the video, excuse me, uh, please click the like button. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.